extracellular vesicle isolation by flow cytometric sorting, and characterization by analytical ultracentrifugation and dynamic light scatter. This presentation is from data from Carly Ross and Dr. Thomas Sermine from Beckman Coulter in Fort Collins and Isaiah Morales Cadestana and Jennifer Jones from the Vaccine Branch at the National Cancer Institute in Bethesda, Maryland. What are extracellular vesicles? Extracellular vesicles include exosomes, activation or apoptosis-induced microvesicles, and apoptotic bodies. They are secreted from membrane vesicles and are generally heterogeneous in size and composition. Exosomes, in particular, are 50 to 100 nanometers in diameter, and they have several functions, including from immune cells. Um, they can use direct contact, endocytosis of vesicles, and vesicle to cell membrane fusion. Why flow cytometric sorting with extracellular vesicles? Size and the fluorescence selectivity allows us to separate unique populations. Using downstream activation and lineage studies for clinical applications, and also high throughput analysis and sorting at the particle level. But you have to have instruments that have high speed electronics, sensitivity in the forward scatter and side scatter parameters. To isolate extracellular vesicles from HeLa cells, first we grow the cell culture into log phase. Then we remove the media, we rinse it, and we replace it with exosome free media. We incubate for two days, and then we harvest the exosomes from the media using a three-step centrifugation process. Then we stain with PKH26 and 67 using the manufacturer's protocol. The MoFlow Astrios EQ side scatter detection limits. The optical engineers from Beckman Coulter in Fort Collins and Miami determined the Mi scatter modeling of polystyrene beads using 200, 300, and 500 nanometer beads and an index of refraction of 1.6. They ran these on the Astro CQ and they analyzed them according to Mi theory. This is the Mi scatter plot defined by the size in nanometers versus the side scatter absorbance units for the particle sizes 100 to 500 nanometer. The lower black line is experimental data acquired on the Astriost EQ, and the blue line is the Mi scatter theoretical side scatter absorbance in relationship to the power density at the stream. The Astriost EQ, a 200 milliwatt 488 laser data, is lower than the theoretical data due to the loss of light from stream scattering, beam geometry, and collection optics. This graph demonstrates that the Astrius EQ should be able to detect 500 nanometer polystyrene bead particles. The inset histogram also demonstrates some of the information seen as it is acquired on the MoFlow Astrius EQ. In comparison to the last slide, this slide shows exosomes with three different index of refraction and the size versus side scatter absorbance units. With the Astrius EQ 200 milliwatt 488 laser, the Mi calculation indicates that the side scatter absorbance of the exosomes will be within and lower than the detection limits. The theoretical calculations for exosomes indicate that the Astrius EQ can detect and sort larger exosomes. The inset histogram shows experimental data which shows 488 forward scatter and side scatter polystyrene beads and HeLa exosomes. The next few slides show the Formamax polystyrene beads acquired on the MoFlo Astrios EQ. The noise population is clearly visible on the 488 side scatter histogram and the forward scatter versus side scatter histogram on the right hand side. Throughout the next slides, the noise and bead population will be shown in the two regions indicated here. There is very little noise in the bead population region with 5% total. The 58 nanometer beads are in and above the noise. There are some issues with swarming, which will be discussed later. However, the populations are still visible. The 81 nanometer polystyrene beads are visible above noise with a clear population on the forward scatter versus side scatter and the side scatter univariate histogram. The 100 nanometer beads 
have a mean of 99 versus the noise of 5 median channels. The last few slides demonstrate that the Astrios EQ is able to detect polystyrene beads to 80 nanometers above noise. However, analyzing sorting exosomes can cause different issues as seen in the next section. To sort extracellular vesicles, including exosomes, on the MoFlo Astrius EQ, there are a few additional considerations that need to be made. Particles smaller than the laser spot may cause coincidence of the particles. Therefore, two extracellular vesicles may be detected as one particle. The sample concentration is key to reducing this issue. Having proper controls also helps in exosome detection. In this study, we used unlabeled extracellular vesicles, dye only, buffer only, and eight peaks to verify the exosome sample. Extracellular vesicle sorting is a high event sort, running 30 to 50,000 events per second, and therefore the FCS files quickly bloat if the user does not utilize the pause acquisition while sorting function. This allows for the sort to continue and the researcher can use the time gating strategy to monitor the sort as it continues. Finally, the smaller populations may be zoomed and Summit uses SciTrack to track the populations as the cytometer is sorting. In this video clip, I artificially created swarming to show the effect it can have on the forward scatter and side scatter of the exosomes by boosting the sample. After stopping the sample, the noise population is visible on the forward scatter and side scatter. When the lasers are shut off, the population diminishes further. The next video demonstrates SciTrack with zoom this is a complementary feature of Summit for the small particle sorting of distinct populations. To reduce the noise population, the user could adjust the drop drive amplitude to reduce the noise population in the forward scatter versus side scatter channels. It is not suggested to adjust the frequency, but the amplitude may be adjusted lower as long as the drop formation remains stable and the customer executes amplitude changes prior to running in Telesort 2. Setting up the MoFlo Astrios EQ for less than one micron particle detection. First, align the stream and the forward scatter with the three micron alignment beads. Replace the ND filter with a zero ND filter. Change the mask to P1. On the instrument touchscreen panel, select the 561 side scatter trigger and then adjust the threshold to 0.006%. The noise events per second should be around 5 to 10,000 events per second. If necessary, reduce the voltage on the 561 side scatter parameter. Select the 488 side scatter parameter from the parameter selector, adjust the noise to visualize the population above noise, and then start the sample. Gently boost 0.1 psi increase until the 200 nanometer beads are visible above noise on the forward scatter versus side scatter. After setting up the MoFlo Astrios for small particle detection, the next project was to determine if the Astrios EQ could sort particles, in this case polystyrene beads, successfully. Since the 80 nanometer beads are near the noise floor of the astrios, the post-sort purity was determined by dynamic light scatter for the 80 nanometer sorted population on the Delsimax. The 80 nanometer bead pre-sort shows the beads above noise on the 488 side scatter as well as the 200 nanometer population. The next slide shows the single 200 nanometer bead control. The 200 nanometer bead population has debris in the buffer as seen in the forward scatter versus 561 side scatter histogram. Clean, well filtered buffer is essential for accurate small particle sorting. After sorting at 70,000 events per second for the 200 nanometer beads, the post sort population is rerun through the system after careful cleaning. 
The 200 nanometer sorted population and the pre-sort population are very similar, indicating successful sorting of the 200 nanometer beads from the 80 nanometer beads. The 80 nanometer post sort was analyzed on the Beckman Coulter Delsimax using dynamic light scatter. The Delsimax takes several minutes to analyze the samples with 10 replicates to provide an accurate measurement with the 532 nanometer laser. The histogram seen on the slide shows the distribution of the sample versus intensity of the particles. The instrument required concentrating the sample to use the DLS and in the sample there was a clear 80 nanometer population and a lack of 200 nanometer beads. This indicates that we sorted the 80 nanometer beads from the 200 nanometer beads. The 200 nanometer post sort population was also run on the Delsimax. The instrument sensitivity should be determined prior to analyzing the exosome populations as instrument capabilities may vary on the side scatter detection. Q is the sensitivity metric and B is the background. The key question to answer is, can your system really measure exosome fluorescence? As suggested, by John Nolan et al. Instruments should be calibrated with quantum MESF beads, for example from Bangs Labs, to measure your instrument's minimum number of detection. If an exosome has a maximum of 100 antigens to CD41, for example, the system has a FITC detection limit of 200, the exosome fluorescence will most likely overlap with noise. Jim Wood from Wake Forest University and APE have created an LED pulser that removes the intrinsic CV error issues from 8-peak beads to allow a more consistent determination of Q and B. The Astros EQ, measured by 8-peak beads on FITC, had a Q value of 0 0.0641 and a B value of 73. The exosome should have a higher than 73 MESF value to be visible on the Astro CQ. As always, researcher system performance may vary. DII stained liposomes 100 nanometers on the Astrios EQ. The Astrios EQ is able to see 100 nanometer DII stained liposomes from noise on both side scatter and the fluorescence 561 channel. The instrument starts with noise visible, then the liposome sample starts with the forward scatter and side scatter. The liposome population is visible above noise on the side scatter channel. Using the channel parameter selector, the image may be changed to the 561-579 fluorescence channel for the DII fluorescence. The stained liposomes are visible above noise on the fluorescence and side scatter channels. When the sample has stopped, the population on the fluorescence channel drops to the noise intensity levels. The next slide shows stained 100 nanometer liposomes on the Astrios EQ. The first slide shows the forward scatter versus side scatter performance with noise, no stain, and stained samples. The liposomes are visible above noise. The stained DII liposomes are above and in the noise of the 561-579 fluorescence channel on the stained liposomes. This indicates that the Astros EQ could measure and detect liposomes which have a lower index of refraction than polystyrene beads at 100 nanometers. That is within the realm of exosomes 